with Makina here, and I want to show. Uh, we actually just filmed. Um, it'll probably be a separate episode for this series, but we did some hunt hunt command stuff, op trying to tap into her nose a little bit, get her nose to start connecting the dots of that's really how I need to find stuff. Um, did more of a retriever drill with her, but I think there'll be value in it for her as well. I think I've seen a little bit of value from it already. Now what I want to do is, because I've got the guys with me and it's such a nice day, I want to walk her similar to how we've done this in the past, because I want to show you the progress of her stretching out. She's a little over six months old right now. She's really finding her, her, uh, herself as a, a bit of a sprinter. Um, she's very much a marathon runner at the same time. So that's one thing that's interesting about these dogs is they really can run as my buddy Todd told me. You just can't believe the way they run. But Todd's got a, a litter, not a litter mate, but a, a dog from the same kennel that's about a year, year older. Um, but I, I wanna show you that she's stretching out. And so it's why I am even more so thinking along the lines of ensuring that I stay connected with her up close in heel position and I want her working with me because as she, as we turn well here I think it's going to help when she gets out there and realizes I'm going that way and she needs to come with me I just I just can't believe that it doesn't I just think that that is part of that feel that you have to develop what's really trying at times with a setter compared to what I'm used to is, I'm used to all these dogs doing it right here where it's very easy to see. Or even when they're out quartering, it's 25 to 35 yards max, it's gun range. And so that's a big difference between 100, 110 or more when you can't see them. And it takes a lot on our end to like have that, have that faith. And I'm gonna talk more about that as the series goes on. But uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'll take her off. This is another great example of the value of this drill that we've been doing. I've been doing it with her for a long time, on and off. She comes to me really well without some, without some fear of this lead. Oh. I've also been working with her quite a bit on this idea of stand still. So a lot of times before I take her for a run, I do this to start out with. Just get her to stand still. and I add a little bit of time to it. I really want her to start realizing that he said stand still means don't move. And I'm using wool for it. I don't, ah! Now she rarely sits. I don't, I've not taught her to sit yet. It's really interesting when she does that because it kind of tells me that she's getting comfortable at the idea of I'm gonna be here a while. But I've only seen her sit probably a handful of times since I've gotten her, and I'm not worried about it, yet. Oh, heel, 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 good, come on, heel, heel, pretty sticky there. So let's do this. Good. Put that adjustable leader on. Now I can give her a little bump, heel. Good, heel. Good. Good. Heel, heel. Good. Ben's got his pup tied out. We can hear her down there by the shop. Good. Good. Heel. Heel. Oh. Good. So we'll see as we take her down. Is she going to get distracted by that and want to check that out? Is she going to work through it? Good, good. Just a little bit of control and slowing things down. 
balance because we're about to cut her loose. So I want to have this, the ability to have this control and then this freedom. Okay. You're not gonna like that, girl. There's a lot of ants there. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Love how she goes to cover really naturally. She's not afraid of cover. She looks for it. She looks for me. I don't talk to her hardly at all. I let her kind of, I try to listen for her. And that's where we're, uh, I, this last weekend I came to the conclusion we're going to have to go to a bell. Because she gets out beyond my sight and I can't see her. Here's where we're going to turn. So we move this way and she kind of, I want her out in front. But as we turn, I want her to see that. And then move with me. And that's what I'm really looking for her to do. She does it pretty well until, until the rabbit runs out. And... Come on. I don't want her going back like that. I'd like to keep her going in the direction I'm going. Good. You know, she avoided that puppy. That's good. That could be distracting. No, 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 no. Let's go. Good response there. I don't want to have to get on her, but when she does start moving that way, I want to let her know and have her move out in front. And she wants to come back here. I hit that little whistle. She makes a swing through. She's got a nice little, I think she's got a real nice natural pattern. I like it. Now again, we're gonna turn up here to the left. So will she come with us? Let's go, come on, let's go, come on. Let's go. Real controlled run here, this, this, I mean, we're just doing a short little walk I wanna show you, but very, very controlled. I mean, not from a distance standpoint, she hasn't gotten more than 60 yards. There she's getting out a little bit.
So she's a little, I mean, she's probably 75 plus right now. Can't quite see her. I see little flashes of her. There she is there. But it's a nice check. You know, she can, I don't mind her being out for 25, 30 seconds at a time, come back, cross the trail, go work out there. I don't mind that at all. Um, it's been bigger than this, and that's where I'm going. Okay, make sure you have the ability to get her back in. And when I say get her back in, I don't mean call her back to me. I, I don't call her back to me very often, but I want to have her checking with me. We've come across a few snipe and she's pointed them doing this walk and earlier this spring she found woodcock doing this and but if that was a month or six weeks ago and I feel like if she if those woodcock were here today I think she'd handle them a lot different and I think that's just coming from this experience that she's getting she's bumped this spring 15 20 woodcock and probably 15 20 grouse and just this last run that I had her up north did she actually start to recognize those grouse point those she pointed a grouse really beautifully so I'm going to do a she likes running by the pigeons she doesn't get that focused on the pigeons because I think it's, it's become pretty pretty normal thing in those pens now you take them out and you tuck them in the grass I think she'll handle them a lot differently but again I like her to just keep moving keep moving in front of me so that was controlled. Probably didn't show you exactly what I have been facing, but um, so she comes in. She'll hold that point once in a while. Good girl. So I just, I'm just letting her hunt. I'm just letting her figure stuff out. Come on, good girl. Good girl, here. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, good. Here, here, good dog. So, you can see that power of that whistle with her. And I had to really intensify it a little bit. And I did and got response out of it. So that's, there's no way I'm, I, I've already seen her run a few rabbits. Um, she barks when she gets on a rabbit. She yip, 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 yip. Little, like a little beagle dog almost. Um, so there's no chance of me calling her off of that. I'm letting her, I'm letting her run that out chase that out. I'd love to stop her on it, but she's going to have to figure it out. But we're just slowly letting the, the balance of freedom and then the balance of earned, earned freedom by control and discipline. And I do think it's a real fine line. And I think we got to have both. And so far, I'm really happy with, with right where we're at. The bird stuff will come. Um, and she's, she's shown that to me. So we're plugging along little by little. Good.